hear cancer, I don't, there's not much good that comes out of it. I just kind of panicked. It, it's, uh, it's a concern, you know, it stays with you. It's a scary word. It's, it's a scary word. I'd say my biggest hockey influence would just be my parents, just, just because of the way uh, gave me the opportunity to succeed. And you know, they're very selfless about it, which is you know something I would like to do and try to give back to them one day for everything they did for me. My dad's side of the family always was hockey players. And uh, you know all my cousins played hockey and my uncles. And uh, my dad was a goalie, but he just kind of took it as a hobby to play and uh, never really thought it would take off like this. But obviously, lucky I got, got into it. I got him started when he was like four, just playing around and skating and took him to open skating, put him in a learn to skate program and uh, geared him up and, and we went open skating a lot. He just took off and just loved the game. He was fascinated with it. And now he tips it ahead to Lewandowski. Lewandowski scores! Every single day after school, we would drive to Hazel Park or to Joe Lewis Arena for practice. That was kind of fun, dropping your son off at practice at Joe Lewis Arena. The favorite part about being a hockey mom is seeing how happy it makes Mitchell, I think. It's uh, Mitchell's passion. I think that we're all so lucky if we have a passion, and he certainly does. And that's been an absolute joy to watch over all these years. Going to hockey tournaments in Canada and, and you know, coming back with wins or whatever it might have been, but just traveling places and getting to see new stuff. Those were our vacations, those were our fun times. Not a lot of people in my family have gone to college, but those who have went to Michigan State. So that was always in the back of my mind. And then after coming here on a, a visit, and when I came here there on a tour, there wasn't even a scoreboard up at uh, in center ice. So it's going to be uh, even better than the years to come. So just to be a part of that, there was just so many different things that changed my mind and you know wanted me uh, to be a Spartan. He got a call from Coach Cole, and they met, and. Coach Cole had some good news um, to tell Mitchell that he would most likely be starting on the first line with uh, his old line mate Patty and uh, Taro. So we were we were pretty thrilled. Everything was going great. He was adjusting to his classes and juggling hockey and uh, practices and doing very well and loving college life. And um, then I was diagnosed with the stage three. Oh, I can't even say it, okay. Okay, I was diagnosed with stage three C, triple negative breast cancer. Performing the national anthem tonight is the Spartan Brass. There was a game, it was, I think it was a Friday night game versus Wisconsin. We played here. My parents just come to the game like normal, so that was just a normal thing of it. And my dad wasn't here, he was away, so I ended up jumping in the car with my mom after the game, and uh, she would drive me back to the dorms, and you know, she kind of stopped me and told me, like, you know, I have something to tell you. Didn't really think too much of it. It was kind of a whatever thing to me. And then, you know, she filed to tell me that, you know, she found out she, she had breast cancer. You know, I, I think that that moment really, you know, put things into perspective for me, whether it was calling her instead of texting her. But it, it really put things in perspective for me and uh, made me want to be a better person. Scariest time of my life and I think what was most scary is telling Mitchell. I was so afraid to have Mitchell's world come crashing down on him. I made a promise to him that I would fight and I'd beat it. And you know, 
I went and did what I had to do, and he went and did what he had to do. She told me that they got it uh, a little early and that, you know, she's going to start treatment. Me being here, I wasn't going to be able to, to go to every doctor's appointment or every uh, checkup. It was always just in the back of my head, you know, whether we were, you know, in Minnesota or Penn State. And, you know, I know she's at the doctor's office while I'm out here playing hockey. So just trying to always make her proud and do my part in all of it. We try to uh, give them all the love and support and and that's one thing we've done um, as a family, and that'll never go away, and, and that really kind of maybe pushed him to thinking clear and, and things that would be okay. I didn't want to mess up all the good and all the hard work that he has done to get him to this point, to get him here to Michigan State. I mean, this is what we've been working for our whole life was to get here, and, and he did it and then I get cancer. <laughs> so it seems pretty unfair, but we worked through it and I started treatment. I was able to come to every home game, I'm sick with my parents in tow, but we were all together and he made a horrible experience bearable is an understatement. <laughs> he, he made it pretty darn good. His success gave us something to look forward to. It was amazing to do and, and to overcome what he had going on in his personal life and family life, to be able to do what he did and, and just go to the rink and have the KHL line and, and play and be a starter. And boy, we were on cloud nine. So we were, we were thrilled and just amazed by, by it all. He called me often. I would always say I'm a text message away. And to this day, I get a daily text that says, love you, mom. And it means the world to me. Doctors believed in me and I believed in the doctors. And I went through 16 rounds of chemotherapy. I uh, had two pretty big surgeries. And when I woke up from that surgery, my mom and best friend and my brother, my daughter, and Mitchell were there to tell me that the cancer was gone. Um, there was no tumor bed, no tumor, no cancer. It was, it was gone. So, a lot of happy tears that day. Ringing the bell is, you know, it's your last procedure, kind of, it's the end of it where you get to ring the bell in front of all your doctors and family who come, and it's the sign to them that, you know, you're, you're better, and. Um, you're on to better days, and I still have a video on my phone of my mom doing it. Uh, it's nothing but smiles and cheers. When I got home, he handed me a box, and I opened it, and it was his Big Ten Freshman of the Year trophy that he had won. It was everything. It meant so much to me. Winning Big Ten freshman year was something that I never thought was, was possible or going to happen for myself and obviously something special I, I was able to do and um, you know was a good gift for her that, that I could easily give to her. I give all my credit to her. It was like my hard work and his hard work kind of paid off. Um, he worked on the ice hard and he made me so proud and it kept me fighting, it kept me going. I'm so proud of him. It's definitely tough to put it into words. I, you know, it's it's pretty special when uh, you know we do the lineup and we're on the line. I know they're up there in the stands uh, in that section behind us. So that I think that's what makes it all kind of come together when I know they're watching those games or everything really comes full circle. And uh, I, I'm just very lucky the way I'm supported and uh, followed by my family.